So emerging adult, typically we consider that uh, to be a person who's moving from high school into college and out of college. So it's a, kind of a, a period of time, about four or five years, uh, where a person is considered an emerging adult. Um, these time periods are starting to expand more and more as we understand the development of uh, folks at this age. Um, but they do tend to be considered folks that are in college or newly graduated college. Emerging adulthood is actually defined as a developmental stage between adolescence and adulthood, or the traditional sense of how we would consider adulthood. And so this idea of emerging adulthood came about um, to explain some of the social and economic changes that have prolonged entry into adulthood. So for example, like a child staying on a parent's phone plan or staying on their insurance. There's a distinction in terms of how the brain is developing from early adolescence through mid-adolescence and into emerging adulthood. And some of the main distinctions are in early and mid-adolescence and even into emerging adulthood, we see an increase in novelty seeking, an increase in risk taking. But one of the main distinctions in terms of development is for folks that are in emerging adulthood and who are in this mid-adolescent phase, um, when they're placed in high emotion situations or high stress situations, their ability to engage in logical thinking starts to revert back to when they were early adolescents. So we do see a change in the ways in which they engage their um, kind of frontal uh, cortex in terms of their abil ability to engage in logical thinking uh, when they're placed in high emotion situations. So what's quite interesting is that um, for those that don't know, our brain actually continues to develop until the age of 25. However, neuroscience research indicates that brain development, particularly in the prefrontal cortex, continues well into this like third decade of life or around age 25. And ultimately, um, when our brain fully develops, then we're start, starting to see the coordinations of cognitions, emotions, and behaviors are really our actions. So everything that we're doing in everyday life starts to become fully formed. Where a student may be not as fully developed is around these long-term strategy pieces. Um, so it might not be so fair to expect a student to be able to prepare for a long-term uh, project in a college class or to be studying uh, along the way um, for their final exams. And oftentimes what we see is students um, kind of struggling to get those pieces done um, through really, in some ways, no fault of their own in terms of their, in terms of their choices, but more in terms of their brain development. And so it's not surprising that, you know, this developmental transition can really yield a lot of stress and anxiety and the uncertainty about the new experiences that one may um, encounter. And so it, it's important to, um, based on the research, it's important to kind of recognize that this developmental stage and the idea of emerging adulthood is really considered the most unstable across the entire lifespan. And so it's not surprising that this period of instability or uncertainty could really result in a lot of stressors, not only for your future or current sun devil, but for yourself as well. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of stress that students uh, find themselves exposed to. There is the positive stress of coming to college, meeting new people, and being exposed to new ideas and new environments. And we see a lot of different kinds of stress that occur in these new environments. And we see a lot of very different responses to stress. But one of the things we know for distress, the most common experience or the most common response to stress is avoidance. Oftentimes, the thing that causes me stress is the thing I'm going to avoid the most, which makes a lot of sense as a, as a short-term strategy to relieve myself of stress, but doesn't help me in the long term whenever I need to think about that project or I need to think about those assignments and get them done ahead of time if they're causing me stress. The reactions to stress can be as varied um, as there are people. So the experience of stress can actually manifest in different ways for different individuals. So for example, you may see that your sun devil is um, you know, sleeping more 
or sleeping less, or you may get a call that they're frustrated or feeling extremely overwhelmed or even experiencing physical symptoms such as a headache or stomach ache. And so all of these physiological as well as emotional responses are indicators that there is some stress that is going on. I think of three major resources that are available um, to students. So first of all, one of the things we know is that students that are better connected to the university at large uh, tend to do better academically. So that looks like uh, being involved in uh, student organizations and importantly, I think student organizations that are related to a student's major. I think the second one uh, would be uh, the Sun Devil Fitness Center. Um, exercise, nutrition, um, and being active uh, really do have important positive effects on uh, the brain and on emotion. And then, and then finally, and I think most importantly, when, when a student finds themselves struggling, even a little bit, it can be important to reach out to ASU Counseling Services. ASU has over a thousand clubs and organizations which we know that um, everyone has a fundamental need to belong and so creating that idea of community and belongingness can really help foster positive development um, as well as provide a source of support in mitigating some of the stressors. Please keep in mind that ASU Counseling Services um, provides some level support 24-7 and there are other uh, resources on campus in particular um, the Counselor Training Center which is located in the College of Integrative Sciences and Arts um, is also offering in-person as well as telehealth services.